I broke off my odyssey of the internees of Latuque last week, if you remember, with our little band of pilgrims entering loose prison. Owing to having led a blameless life since infancy, I had never seen the interior of a calaboose before, and directly I set eyes on the official in the front office, I regretted that I was doing so now. There are moments as we pass through life when we gaze into a stranger's face and say to ourselves, I have met a friend. This was not one of those occasions. There is probably nobody in the world less ill-fin than a French prison official. And the one now twirling a grover wailing moustache at me looked like something out of a film about Devil's Island. Still, an author never quite gives up hope. And I think there was just a faint idea at the back of my mind that mine host, on hearing my name, would start to his feet with a cry of Quoi? Monsieur Voudas, on brasse moi, mate. And offer me his bed for the night, adding that he had long been one of my warmest admirers and would I give his little daughter my autograph. Nothing like that happened. He just twirled the moustache again, entered my name in a large book, or rather he put down Widhorse, the silly son of a bachelor, and motioned to the batty bazooks to lead me to my cell. Or as it turned out, the communal cell of myself, Algy of Algy's bar, and Mr. Cartmill, our courteous and popular piano tuner. For in those piping times of war, I don't know how it is on ordinary occasions, Bruce Prison was bidding out its guests three to the room. It was now getting on for ten o'clock at night, and it was as if I discovered later that saved us a lot of unpleasantness. Round about the hour of ten, the French prison official tends to slacken up a bit. He likes to get into something loose and relax over a good book, and this makes him go through the motions of housing a batch of prisoners quickly and perfunctorily. When I got out into the exercise yard next morning and met some of the men who had been in the place for a week, I found that they, on arrival, had been stood with their faces to the wall, stripped to their BVDs, deprived of all their belongings, and generally made to feel like so many imprisoned pieces of cheese. All they did to us was to take away our knives and money and leave us.